Saturday, August 9th, and we're at the Moores Forts Recreation Field. We're here for a grasshopper baseball game between the visiting Champlain team and hometown Moores Club. Coaches today for Moores are Larry and Paula Gooley for Shazie, Champlain, excuse me, it's Joe Moore. Morris comes in here with a record of 10 wins and only one loss. Their loss was a forfeit. They forfeited to Shazy, who insisted on having the players pitch through most of the season. The coaches have been pitching to their players. This has allowed the players to hit. The Moores coach pitches to the Moores players. The Champlain coach will pitch to the Champlain players. And Jay-Z picked up two wins because Rouse's Point coach Leonard Patry also refused to, to play a game that way and this Moores team refused. But Moores will finish in first place for the regular season. In fact, the only season there are no playoffs in Grasshopper Baseball. It's 10.04 and we're about to get started on this Saturday morning ball game. Umpires today, a couple of players from the Northeastern team, Larry White behind the plate and on the bases, Rick Dumas. At this point, it looks like the rain has finally let up. And this field overall is in really good shape considering the rain we've had in the last few days. There is a little bit of wetness here behind the plate. This is Brad Juno who's going to lead off for Champlain. He gets a pitch from Joe Moore and Joe blocks the pitcher successfully. For those of you who haven't seen the grasshopper game, the coaches will be pitching to their respective teams. The fellow standing next to Joe Moore is the pitcher who fields the position. This is Lane Trombley. He's the third baseman. So the pitcher, as far as the batting order goes, is really the person who fields the position. And the whole reason for the coaches doing the pitching for their team is to let these youngsters learn how to hit the ball and what to do once they do hit the ball. There are no walks, but there are strikeouts. This is Nolan Oaks, he's the second baseman. And of course the reason for no walks is because uh, it el eliminates the temptation of a 
coach walking his players, but the players can strike out, either swinging or looking. Well, the coach has got to get the balls in there in the strike zone. That's a hard hit ball. And it looks like Brad Juno is going to score. Oh, one run across here for Champlain. They have a, I believe it's seven run maximum in an inning after a team has scored seven runs in an inning. The inning is over as far as they're concerned. This is Alan Racine. He's the first baseman. Yes, two strikes on him, so he can't afford to let anything go by. It's foul. They've moved the bases up a bit to get the players on the grass more here, so the base path normally is used is off to the left or to the right, depending on which base you're running down. Strike three, that's out number two. And this will bring Steve Gay to the plate. First base guy, now look alive. Very humid morning here with the sun peeking through the clouds. It was raining earlier in the day. It looks like the sun is going to make its way through finally. Get to the right side. He'll probably beat this one out. He will. Not by a lot, and another run scores as Oaks crosses the plate. So Gay is on. It's bring up Jimmy Wells. Wells hits the first one. It's going to be safe at second. Try it again, fellas. It's all right. Don't fall down on the grounders now. Just scoop them up. Yeah, it's bring up Jason Thompson, the left fielder. Second or first, guys? <laughs> Mike, if you get it, just tag the base. Come on, Jason. Swings at the first pitch. We'll have a tag play here. And a tag was made. Shortstop is Andy Anktill. So I believe Champlain came up with two runs in the top of the first. We'll go to the bottom half of the first inning now. Ball. There's a foul ball. This first batter is Kent Monette. Coach Larry Gooley has given me a little information on some of these players. It's strike two. Foul ball. Monette is nine years old. He comes in here with a batting average of 775. There's strike three. He had 30 runs batted in with six home runs during the year. And according to Gooley, he has an excellent glove. He had four triples, six doubles, and 15 hits. He had six hits in one game and 12 consecutive hits at one point. This is Kevin Lamberton. No, wait a minute. Yes, it is Kevin Lamberton. Nice catch there by Racine at first base. Lamberton came in with a batting average of 750. He had 16 singles, three doubles, four triples, four home runs, and 22 runs batted in. Also an excellent glove. He had 11 consecutive hits. He has good speed. And this here is Andy Engtill. At one point he had 18 consecutive hits. He's nine years old. 
There's a ball hit to the right side. That's going to be through for a base hit for Engtill. So third base coach John Engtill sees his son get a single. Engtill, I said, had an 805 batting average. It's 805. His batter here swings at the first pitch is Billy Covey. He is age 9, 756 batting average. He had three home runs in one game, 11 runs batted in in one game. He had 37 runs batted in for the year, 10 home runs, 6 triples, 6 doubles, 9 singles. Anktil had 19 singles. There's a base hit up the middle, a hard hit by, by Covey. Throw's going to come to third and... Hank Till's going to make it, I guess. <laughs> Marty Sample batted 875 for the season. He had 10 consecutive hits. He has good speed. 19 singles, 8 doubles, no triples, 1 home run, 15 runs batted in. Fouls off the first pitch. As you can see, Gooley pitches fairly hard to his players. He believes in... Uh, there's a ball right in fair territory. We're going to have a run across for Moores. Gully believes that his team will learn to hit better if he pitches a little harder. So his, his uh, complaint about the players pitching is not the speed of the ball, it's the control. This batter here is Josh Kaye. All right, here we go. He's got a base hit to left field. Run number two is going to cross the plate. The throw is going to come in. Kaye. Come on, Marty. Come on. Now, oh, we're going to have a rundown, but we're going to have a run across here. Kaye came in with a thousand batting average, 17 for 17 on the season. Now he's now 18 for 18. Can't do much better than that. He had nine singles, three doubles, one home run, four home runs, and 13 runs batted in. All the players listed above so far, and the one following, Danny Davison, are all listed as having excellent gloves. Davison had 14 consecutive hits. He batted 750 for the season. 21 duh, singles, there's a swing and a miss. Five doubles, one triple, no home runs, and nine runs batted in. Fair ball, says Plate. Another run crosses the plate. This brings up Keith Watts, who's listed here as having a good glove. He had four hits in one game. He had a 5-14 batting average. He had 14 singles. One double. A foul ball into the, into the parking lot. Two home runs. No, two triples. One home run and 12 runs batted in. That'll be strike three. That'll be out number three. We're going to go now to the top of the second inning. The leadoff batter here for Champlain will be Chad McMillan. And the second inning, Moores is leading by a score of four to two. There's strike one. <coughs> Two. <laughs> and there's a strikeout. So McMillan is out, and this will bring up Dan Gay, the right fielder.
swings and misses for strike one. This game was played Saturday morning, August 9th, if you tuned in late. And even if you didn't tune in late, it was still played Saturday morning, August 9th. Strike. Strike two, I believe. Three, that'll be two down. This will bring up Brad Juno. The, is the leadoff hitter on the club. <clears throat> Fouls it for a strike. Again, there are no walks, no hit batters, but there are strikeouts. Kid can get called out for looking, like, and then there's one example. One nothing across for Champlain. We're going to the bottom of the second inning with the score remaining. Moore's four, Champlain two. I'm walking back to uh, pop up over my head. There's a swing and a miss. That batter there was Mike Fletcher, the third baseman. Fletcher came in with a 304 batting average. He had six singles and a triple during the season, and seven runs batted in. His first year of baseball for Fletcher. He had a bases loaded triple. This here is Mark Demore. It's also his first year. He's got good speed. He had batted 294 for the year. He's eight years old. Fouls that one off, and Coach Gooley says he's a future power hitter. He had a double and an RBI during the season. I was over the community getting a little information from the Champlain coach Joe Moore and his assistant Danny Watts. It's strike three, so two strikeouts, and this is going to bring up Kent Monette. Incidentally, our catcher for Champlain is Bruce Juno. Champlain was short a player. And Gooley pitches kind of fast, so he was afraid of the somebody getting hurt. So Brad Juno's brother Bruce was here watching the game and Gooley allowed him to come in defensively for the Champlain team. Hard hit ball, this, that was Keith, excuse me, Kent Manette. Kent Manette makes the third out. So it's a one, two, three inning, and we're going to go to the top of the third with our score still remaining. Four to two, Moore's leading. Sun has peeked behind the clouds again on us. This is the Lane Trombley. Lane swings at the first one and pops it up over the screen over the backstop for a foul. The 
Strike two. Strike three. So Tom Blee is out. This will bring up Nolan Oaks, the second baseman. Is that the right up, guys? I'm going to play it now. Up to the right side. I'm gonna drop in there. A little single for Oaks. This will bring up Alan Racine, first baseman. Looks at strike one. There's strike two. Inside. There's a hard hit ball. I'll be through for a base hit. Oaks goes to third. And this brings up Steve Gay. Danny. 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 first and third, but there are two down for Champlain. <coughs> strike one. Strike two. Strike three. So that will be it for Champlain. And we're going to go now to. Wait a minute here. Excuse me, that's only two outs. I was thinking that was out number three, but uh, this is only the fifth batter of the inning. This is Jimmy Wells. Wells hits it back to the pitcher. He'll go to second for the force, and Ricky Dumas, the umpire, says he's out on a close play. And we're going to go now to the middle of the third inning with the score Champlain 2, Mowers. Four. Coach Gooley gave me about uh, enough information here to fill a, a volume of an encyclopedia on his team. And I'll try to fill some in here so I can concentrate on the batters. When they're up, the team batting average was 632. In 10 games, they scored 169 runs and allowed 73. So. That means they averaged 16.9 runs and allowed 7.3. They had 251 hits and 151 hits allowed, so they out hit their opponents by 100 hits. They had 158 singles, 44 doubles, 21 triples, and 28 home runs. We're awaiting our first batter. This is going to be Kevin Lamberton, a 10 year old. He fouls it back over our head. A hard hit ball to the right side. And he makes it all the way to second. So he runs a little bit faster than his father Howard does. And this will bring up Andy Anktill. Check swing for strike one. Again, the K 
catcher. Behind the plate is Bruce Juno, who's helping out here. Catching for the Champlain Club. There's a hard hit ball. And Andy almost hit his father down that third baseline. The right side. Racine takes it unassisted. Runner goes to third. And this brings up Billy Covey, the center fielder. He fouls it back. Covey's a nine year old, so he'll be back next year. These are eight to ten year olds. Side. It's going to be slowed down out there. It's going to score a run. And Covey has a double. This brings up Marty Sample. Out. And the batter now will be Josh Kaye. Kaye is the one who hasn't made an out yet. He's 18 for 18, 17 for 17 coming into the game. He had a hit his first time up. The trouble. Got it. Woo! So the first night in time. And on the overthrow, we'll have a run scoring and KA going to second. I guess we'll rule out an infield hit and we'll call him now 19 for 19. This brings up Danny Davison, who once had 14 consecutive hits. side again this could be trouble instant replay of the last one safe at first runners at the corners and this is Keith Watts swings and misses for strike one strike two Keith, you can do it. Popped up. That falls in. And this is Michael Fletcher. up over my head and bounces off a car back there in the parking lot there's a hard hit one should be good for maybe three bases chases home a couple of runs and the thrill comes home and Fletcher will have a triple. 
That's his second triple of the season. This will bring up Mark Damore, batted 294 for the season. Again, Moores was undefeated. The only loss in a 10-1 record thus far was a forfeit to Shazy on a matter of principle. Shazy picked up two forfeits, one to Rouse's Point and one to this Moores Club. Mark. Oh, hit the shortstop. Scores another run. This brings up the leadoff batter, Kent Monet. Swings at the first one, hits it for a base hit. And this is now Kevin Lamberton. <laughs> I think uh, six runs across this far for more, so one more run will be an end to this half inning as there is a seven run rule for half inning. And guess who gets to score the winning or the last run? To center field. That's seven. That'll be it for this half inning. As Mowers has scored their maximum. And we'll see if that eighth run will count since it occurred on the same play that the seventh run occurred on. We'll see if it is allowed to count. Warm up, we've got a injury at first base. It's like the first baseman got a ball on the nose. They were warming up and the ball bounced around and injured the first baseman. We found out that the eighth run will not count. There will only be seven runs at half inning, so the score is now 11 to 2. First baseman Kent Monette is back in the game. He, uh, has recuperated from his injury. Out at first. That batter was Jason Thompson. The batter now will be Chad McMillan. Sun peeking out again. Looks like the beginning of a hot and muggy day. Strike three, McMillan will be out. Let's bring up Dan Gay. That ball started the game white. It is now chocolate colored. They're 
strike two. Uh, several defensive changes for Moores <coughs> and also future offensive changes. Alan Fortier has come in to catch. He's replaced Andy Engtill, who was the shortstop. Uh, Gay hits the ball. The pitcher over to first. That'll be an out. That was Josh Kaye who came in from right field to take over the pitcher position. Other defensive changes. Left fielder Marty Sample has gone to shortstop for Moores. Josh Gooley has come in to replace Danny Davison. Gooley is in right field. Kevin Boris has come in to replace Keith Watts. He has gone to left field. And now we're going to the bottom of the fourth with the score remaining 11 to 2. Moores leading. Moment to give you some of the information provided to me by Moore's coach Larry Gooley on the three substitutes coming into the game. Kevin Boris, number 21, is eight years old. He batted 308 for the year. He had seven singles, a double, and two runs batted in. He has good speed. It's his first year of playing. He had three hits in one ball game. Alan Fortier, the nine-year-old, also his first year. He's developing into a good hitter, according to Gooley, with surprising power. He batted 250. He had five singles and six runs batted in. Josh Gooley is a seven-year-old. Must be the coach's son here, snuck in as a seven-year-old. He had five hits in one game. He's a consistent contact hitter. He batted 538, which isn't too bad for a seven-year-old, is it? He had 12 singles, two doubles, and three runs batted in. I appreciate Larry Gooley compiling that information and passing it along to us. It's always nice to have a little extra info to help fill in the gaps during the ball game. Adams popped up straight back and very close to me. This batter here is number 30. This is Alan Fortier. back. The first time I've stopped in at this Moore's Forks field here. Nice little area. Well kept up. Nice place for the kids up here to play. There's a ball hit to the right side. We're going to have a play at first and we're going to have an out. So Fortier is out. And this is Billy Covey. On the ground, second baseman watched it for a few seconds, then decided to give chase. So it goes a hit, and this will bring up Marty Sample. There's foul ball. Or strike one. There's strike two. Yeah, looks like we had an out while I was looking the other way. This is Josh K.A. Yeah. Yeah. Two. How many outs do we have? Two. Uh -oh. On the ground. That'll be another run. That'll be run number 12 for Moores. Look out. Jimmy Wells not paying much attention. The 
Outfielder was throwing the ball in, and Wells is looking at the ground. The batter here is uh, Josh Gooley. Gets it to the right side. It's going to be trouble here as nobody's covering first, so it's going to be an infield hit. And this is Kevin Boris. At the plate, I'll be out number three. Well, we'll go now to the top of the fifth inning. Score is 12 to 2. This is Jimmy Wells, I believe. No, it's not. Excuse me. This is Brad Juno. Brad Juno here batting. Catch by the pitcher. So we have Lane Trombley. Champlain came in with a record of two wins and eight losses. They have one game remaining against West Shazy, I believe. Like two. Hey, give him another ball. And Larry White throws the ball out. He says just a little bit too much mud on that one. Like three, so Trombley is out. And this brings up Nolan Oaks. Oaks hits the first pitch to shortstop. It's going to be a long throw. He's going to be out. So a good play by Moores. Current shortstop, I believe, is Marty Sample. So a nice play by Sample. And we're going to go now to the bottom of the fifth. With the score remaining. Moores 12, Champlain 2. Mike Fletcher, the third baseman, will lead off things for Moores here in the fifth inning. Swings at the first one. It's going to be a fair ball. Oh, gets away. Oh, we'll get an extra base out of it. If this were a bigger league. Fletcher might have been called out for running into the catcher. They also might have been called out for running on, in fair territory. But uh, there's no reason to get into con into, uh, technical stuff at that this point. This is Mark Demore. He's the roving fielder. Ball. 
Make this one count. Make this one count, Mark. Make this one their territory, Mark. Not to the first baseman. Nor second. Make this one stop. Your baseman. Take three. Bring up Kent Monette. This level, they don't uh, be, aren't too concerned about the drop third strikes. The runners at second and third, and the batter here will be Kevin Lamberton. Popped up over my head. I had two or three come back this way, but fortunately they've all been pop ups and not liners. Our runner scores. That's run number 13 for Moores. That's now a 13 to 2 ball game. And the batter will be Alan Fortier. Runners at the corners. Swing and miss, it's going to be strike one. That's a hard hit ball. Mad. Drives in another run, and it brings up Billy Covey, center fielder. He had 10 home runs during the season in 10 games, so he's averaged a home run per game. Fouls this one back. There's a force out at second. And this batter here will be Marty Sample. to the sixth inning. Our score is 15 to 2. Moores is leading. Alan Racine is going to get dusted off here by his coach. Joe Moore says the ball is a little slippery. On the top of the sixth inning, this is a scheduled six inning game. And since the most runs a team can score in one inning is seven, and since Champlain is losing by more than seven, a nice catch by the pitcher, Josh Kaye. Of course, the pitcher is the person fielding the pitching position. That was Josh Kaye and a nice grab. So Racine is out. 
And as I was saying, since Champlain is more than seven runs behind, it's safe to say that they have lost this game and Moores will pick up a win. This is Steve Gay. So Moores will pick up their 11th win. Their record will be 11 and one. And again, their only loss was a forfeit over a matter of principle to the Shazy Club. Kent Manette handles it, unassisted. That'll be out number two, and Jimmy Wells will be the batter. Down there, bounced up and hit uh, Fortier, the catcher, in the face mask. Sun has been peeking in and out all morning here on August 9th. A strike. We're one out away from completion of the ball game. Hit to the right side. Manette will grab it. That'll be out number three, and that'll be the ball game. So Morris picks up the 15 to two win. They scored four in the first, seven in the third, one in the fourth, and three in the fifth. So they'll finish the season with an 11 and one record. And more, and Champlain will drop to two and nine with one game remaining. So it was a fairly fast moving ball game for Grasshopper Baseball. It took about an hour and 15 minutes.